Oh, it's time. Time to get radical. Your discretion is advised. Welcome to Comment of the Week from January 13th to January 19th. Now we're going to do something a little different here, and we're going to actually read out the honorable mentions. All right, no replies, but I will acknowledge and read out the honorable mentions before we get into the medal ceremony. The first honorable mention of Comment of the Week comes to us from Mr. Monster. Mr. Monster says, I really feel bad for not keeping up with this. I always would comment first on the video with some sort of wrestling move. I couldn't keep it up once I got a job, and I really feel bad about not catching up. When I started watching you, had videos, you had videos of inspirational stories and other topics. You always would put gameplay in the background of your videos if you had the power to record your gameplay. Why not make playthroughs or Let's Plays? They are very popular. I would watch a Radical Rick Let's Play. Anyways, maybe it's good that you're taking a break because you have been making videos nonstop for so long. This can give you an opportunity to have some fun with the games that you want to play and have some relaxation time without the stress of having to care about what other assholes are trying to do on YouTube. It's like we can speak out about it as much as we want, but in the end, people will always do what they want, and unfortunately, the system encourages it. But I don't think all of them have gotten away with it because there are so many people who have a better understanding of what begging for electronic money is and whether or not they should contribute to it. In the end, you actually did complete most of your mission. And I think people have a better perception on the YouTube business than they did before. So thank you for all the work you've done. Go have yourself a break. Thank you, Mr. Monster. The second honorable mention comes to us from the Winged Avenger. Floyd Mayweather has made a fortune tricking boxing fans into buying fights that his opponent had no chance of winning. You're right in thinking his fight with Connor was fixed, but this wasn't your usual fix. When Floyd fixes a fight, it's because his opponent is such a no-hoper that he needs to take it easy on him for a while and make it look like a competitive contest. If Floyd had knocked Connor out in the first 20 seconds, which he could have done, the public would have chastised him to no end. So he let Connor get some shots off and even look good for a few rounds and then just stopped him abruptly. If this theory sounds unbelievable, just look at a similar fight, Mayweather versus Marquez. That was the fight to build up the Pacquiao-Mayweather super fight because Marquez has given Pacquiao two very hard fights. Floyd unwittingly knocked Marquez down early with a casual punch and realized he was about to ruin his chances of getting Pacquiao to want to fight him. So Floyd incredibly just stopped throwing punches and won the fight by decision. Only after that dismal display did Pacquiao agree to face Floyd. Thank you, the Winged Avenger. And the third honorable mention comes to us from Budget Gaming. Maybe it's just me, but I personally have never seen you personally call for the doxing of anyone. I recently saw a video that called you out for a claim that you made... In my opinion, both sides have interesting evidence, and the truth of the matter isn't really readily apparent. I found it quite interesting that the criticism that you received greatly was surrounded by the actions of members of your community, specifically one or two individuals. While I commented on that video suggesting that both of you denounce doxing attempts on each other's channels, I think it's also important to hold individuals responsible for their actions alone and not the actions of others. You, like those you have discussed in the past, are subject to criticism. However, I think criticizing you over the actions of someone else is ridiculous. I've thoroughly enjoyed listening to your channel, and I treated it like a podcast. I think that your critical viewpoints are often reasonable and at the very least consistent. I often enjoy the nuance of arguments so much so that even if I may not completely agree with an opinion, that I can enjoy a well-crafted argument in support of it. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. Many of the YouTubers you criticize, I enjoy. I'm not going to rush and hit the dislike button because you said something critical of someone who I like to watch. I often find myself thinking, well, he has a point. It's really sad to see the state 
things have come to on this platform. It's a travesty to see your content disappear, but we are in a time where people would rather get rid of anything that they don't agree with rather than critique it themselves. Whatever you decide to do, I wish you the best of luck. While I would love to continue watching the typical content that you made in the past, I also would love to see you discuss things like video games or things you enjoy. It is clear that you are a very passionate person and that you have strong beliefs. I think it would be awesome to see that energy channel into things that you enjoy rather than things you dislike. Or you always could think up a new persona. I myself have been thinking of making a character called Sellout Steve, where I'll shill out for Raid Shadow Legends in a satirical way. Best of luck, Rick. Big Brother may be watching, but you can always say that you spoke your mind and held true to your convictions. Thank you, Budget Gaming. Now we get into the medal ceremony. The bronze medal today is going to come to us from Art Bell. To your point, a great summary of an article talking about marriage being rejected and avoided by young men. Says women want alpha males for sweating better in the dark and betas for their money. Social media allows women to lure and nail down a good earner then start using apps to cheat too. This was happening in Japan in the 1980s. Women had different guys for each task, a dry boyfriend to get places, a food boy for meals, bedroom boy is the one all the men wanted to be. Past number of years, even the dumbest young men are noticing the deal hurts them, running from marriage. Oh my God, hateful article. Versus marriage is not a fun deal for the guy. No way to put a smile face on it. But the divorce lobby will fight uh, fight changes like five-year marriages that renew or die with no penalty for either side. This is actually an option in Iran. I suppose immigration is supposed to cure all? Single moms raising nine out of ten kids is not as good as a future as two parents. Oh my God, how dare I? A lot of crime from hate in the hearts of kids who never had a dad around. It seems to create a higher risk that uh, some kind of hatred for society is built from this family pain. If uh, F O M O, if you would, except the they did actually did miss out on having his dad around. Sorry, I kind of flubbed that part. Art Bell. Sorry about that. Uh, this is why men don't want to get married anymore by a YouTuber called Voltaire. It just doesn't make sense any longer. And I think you might have left a link to that, but I couldn't find it. If you can leave a link to that upload art, and if you're still around here, okay, uh, please do. I want to check that out. I really can't believe that that actually happened in the 80s in Japan. I'll have to have to ask a jillionaire to maybe just verify that to make sure you're not pulling my chain there, Art. That's crazy, though. So women had different guys for each task, a drive around boyfriend, a food boyfriend, and a bedroom boy. Ooh, you know you want to be the bedroom boy. Uh, did they get to rotate or was that the task that were giving them forever? Imagine your life waking up to your wife and you can't be the guy that porks her. You're just the guy that drives her around or you're just the guy that gets her food. You know, she works up an appetite, porking the third guy. That's just terrible. Terrible. Um, so you said marriage is... The studies show that marriage is being rejected and avoided by young men. As I think, Art, it should be. I just think marriage should be avoided in general, you know, when you're really young. Because there's so many people that marry their high school sweetheart. And then it only lasts for a couple years. Or you knock her up, and then you have a loveless marriage. And it, and I know sometimes passion gets the best of you, and something happens, and that something that happens as a kid. Luckily, I've not had any of those mistakes. I mean, they're lovely, wonderful things, children. I mean, you know. Um, but to be honest, if that happened to me in my life, whew, I, I just don't. I just don't know what I would do. I don't know. I don't, I don't think I ever really want to replicate art. I don't think I do. Now, the misfortune is most of the females in the past I've dated, they want to. 
And of course, that's a irreconcilable difference. And so, yeah, I tend to sometimes stay single. Just over that thing there. Now, hopefully one day, Art, I'll find somebody. And, uh, you know, right now, I'm, I'm doing good, though, because I'm in like a... I'm not really playing the field. I mean, I might have a relationship last for a couple months and then, you know, kids come up or something else comes up or whatever. Or so what do you want to do with the rest of your life? So what's your plan? I'm like, hey, this is pretty good. <laughs> I don't have any grand plan. Maybe that's a problem, Art. You got to have a grand plan with your life. I'm just kind of like a live by the city of your pants kind of guy. I'm a seize the moment, live in the moment, live in the now kind of guy. So maybe one day I'll find a female like that. But until then, it's mostly just, you know, casual stuff, I suppose. And uh, nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with being married. Nothing wrong with being married and having kids and all that kind of good stuff. It's just, it's just not for me. Marriage is not for me. Like, there's just so many aspects of it that I don't like. All right, legally binding yourself to another human being. Legally binding yourself to another human being. I guess with the big expectation that that other human, that other person, that other human being cannot get romantically with another human being. But people cheat on each other like all the time. People get married and then they cheat on each other. Maybe they might find an alpha guy. You know, there there was someone I was talking to earlier, Art Bell. I was out, you know, just doing some shopping, buying some stuff. And I just struck up a casual conversation with someone. And she was kind of cute. She had a lot of piercings. And I talked to her about her piercings and everything. And it took about 10 minutes into the conversation for her husband to come up. <laughs> you know, I'm thinking to myself... Okay, this is the kind of thing she probably should you know, bring up instantly. You know, usually if it's a good woman, they'll bring it up. You know, they'll just casually drop it like, hey, how's your day going? Yeah, you know, oh, you know that right there. I got to get some like that because my husband, he wanted that a little later. They'll bring it up. They'll bring it up. I'm not saying art in this situation that this person was thinking, man, this is an alpha male. I might want to sweat with him a little bit in the dark. Better than my hubby. But I can imagine being that hubby. Sometimes you don't know. Sometimes you think you got a good one. Sometimes you don't know. And imagine being married to someone like that. Now, I'm not saying she would, this person would have, um, you know, dated me or exchanged numbers and not told me about, you know, her husband. But some do. Some might. And not just females, but guys too. So uh, I would like to know, and you'll never know a percentage, Art, of how many people, how many couples cheat on each other, but because how do you know? It's also crazy when you look up those uh, polls and percentages, because right now there's people cheating on their loved one. Maybe you're part of a relationship and someone's cheating on you. Maybe you'll never know. I just don't know. Something about just, something about marriage, though, because... There's so many things in a relationship that can go wrong, that can go sideways. And if it's uh, if it's in the situation of the man and, you know, you break up with someone and or something happens and the marriage comes to an end, guess what? You got to pay child support. So, yeah, there's so many aspects about marriage that just is not in the benefit of a male uh, unless maybe the male's maybe older, I don't know, and, you know, not for a young male. If a guy has soda oats, and he's pretty much had a sample of every different type of female, you know, he's went through his bucket list, all right, he's tasted every flavor of the rainbow, and he's like, okay, I know exactly what kind of female I like, then that's a good deal. But I don't know, there's... There's, to me, there's really not a huge upside for a man to get married really young. Just in my, you know, uh, personal opinion there. But a lot of you can feel free to disagree, all right? Went a little long on that art, okay? But it's cool. I only do this once a week. It's cool. No problem. The silver medal. 
today. Going to come to us from Wet Brees. I replied to your comment on Smash JT's video, but I think he blocked me a long time ago. Here was my message. Well, we have some comment preservation here from Wet Brees. Rick, I appreciate all the time and energy you put into the channel. Broadcasting comments and cultivating thoughts in your comment section. You made waves in the YouTube gaming channel's macro community, all tribal, not a wholesome community, and I hope you just jump right back into it if you ever feel the itch and never apologize for anything. 5K sub to the channel, and it was, a, it was grown completely organically. One of the most lively comment community on all of YouTube game collecting, strong focal point on combating e-beggars in the collecting realm. You were a success. The content is what made the channel grow. Most of YouTube peers had to shamelessly self-promote their channels on other social media platforms, piggyback off others, and stroke a lot of dick to get that level, to get to that level. An equal and opposite force to many a YouTuber with the 100k plus subs. I never once got a sense that you had an ounce of narcissism. Just very self-aware of the force of your channel and never afraid to remind little fairy boys about the chain dangers of tugging on Superman's cape. Go figure your only kryptonite was false flagging and gossip girls envying the power that your channel acquired. Power in the truth. Man formerly known as Warehouse Dave. Oh yeah, this is Warehouse Dave. Warehouse Dave was one of the people that John Hancock uh, copy striked into oblivion. And I'm sure you're happy that now it's come to light. It's come to light that what he did, all that he did there. And it's a sad thing. It is sad, Warehouse Dave, Wet Brees, that that happened to you. But this is what happens. This is what happens to a lot of critical satire now. Uh, now, I'm doing my best in the future to avoid that kind of fate. Um, I have changed up the channel. You all have noticed I've changed a lot of things up. I no longer use thumbnails uh, of the likeness of YouTubers. I no longer use any video clips. Pat, the Patreon punk. I mean... Not saying that Pat would probably try to copy strike that upload, but it could be a possibility because it would be open in YouTube in 2020. It could be open to that. So, yeah, if I ever re-uploaded that, I would have to really completely cut it up. And I don't know. It's a shame that you have to do these things on what should be an open platform. But I understand it. I understand how things are now. That's one of the big reasons I really thought and considered um, if I wanted to come back or not. Because I would have to make sacrifices. I don't like that, but ultimately I decided that even in a scaled back form, I'd still want to come back. Because of all of you, and because I enjoyed YouTube. But there's a lot of different factors in my time away that I considered. And I did put a lot of time and energy into the channel. I didn't put a lot of high production quality into the channel. Some days admittedly, I'm like, man, that was just really kind of haphazardly done. But I put a lot into the channel of a resource. And that's just from deep inside myself. Just from deep inside myself, a lot of my energy, a lot of my focus I put into the channel. Okay, and I don't know, some people might say that, you know, equal parts, that could be equal parts of the same amount of uh, effort a lot of other channels that are bigger, full-time YouTubers put into their channel. I always judged it as a part-time channel. And that's not like a, that's not getting me out of the way of criticism, okay? It is not, right? But I think you should judge channels that are full-time channels a little differently than you judge part-time channels on the side, hobby-type channels. So I really went hard at a lot of channels that were full-time channels. People that didn't have to get up and go to work in the morning because YouTube uploading YouTube videos, that's what they considered work. I went hard at channels because you had a lot of these motherfuckers 
these motherfuckers that were the biggest beggars in most cases. Okay, these people that, you know, they made the choice. They made the choice to do YouTube full time. No one, no one, no one told them to make that choice to not have a job on the side. Okay, but they, then they would use that excuse. Oh, you know, I don't have a job, so this is my only source of income. Well, fuck, then go get a goddamn job. Okay? You know, like, like they're doing the world a big service. Oh, you're doing the world a big service, right? Freaking gaming historian. Doing the world a big service by uploading maybe once a freaking month. And I know I, I mention Norm a lot, but there's so many people you can mention. There really is. And, um... I need to get back to replying to your comment here. Okay. You said that I was a success. The content is what made the channel grow. Um, and a lot of my peers had to shamelessly self-promote their channels to other social media platforms. Y yeah. I, there's so many people that... And I'm not saying... I'm not knocking a lot of people that try to do whatever they can to grow their channel. They try to play the game a certain way to grow their channel. Maybe they try to, you know, get on other channels and get people to give them shout outs and handshake deals behind. I understand how YouTube works. I just don't like that aspect. And I was really shocked. I was fucking shocked when I saw my channel start to grow. I was shocked. Like I didn't, you know, like, like some people might say, Rick, you, ultimately you were going to grow. Because as an open commentary channel, as a guy that's really fucking passionate, you were ultimately going to grow. But the thing is, the thing is, Warehouse Dave, there's a lot of people out there on YouTube in different respects that are just as passionate as I am. But they haven't grown. They haven't. And there's a lot of channels out there that aren't really that fucking passionate at all. They just, you know, paint by the numbers samey shit, you know, and they don't really care that much about their audience and they grow immensely. Maybe they have an angle. Mm, maybe they like, maybe they like cucumbers. Mm. Maybe they have a hook. Maybe they got something going on. Huh? But I don't know. It's just, it's just a begging. Mostly it is. It's mostly the begging that I don't like. I mean, if there's a lot of these channels and they want to do their own thing, I understand it. I understand how a lot of people see YouTube as a business. I have no issue with YouTubers that, you know, even just want to structure their channel really is like a business to an extent. If they're open and honest about it, if they're open and honest and they're like, you know, this is my YouTube channel and this is a business. This is my job. My focus is getting money on YouTube because I see it as my job. If they just fucking said that. I might even go, okay, cool. I'll lay off you because you fucking came, cl you came clean and you admitted it. But there's so many things you do not see. There's so many things I haven't even delved in that you don't see that I can see. Okay. And because I can see these things, I want to open up a lot of other people's eyes and maybe help them to just understand a little bit about how YouTube works. And yes, mostly to save people some fucking money, okay? Now, who is the big daddy? Who has the first gold medal of the new comment of the week? Well, it's none other than Haddington Rose. I would say, do not go gentle. Do not go gentle into that good night. But you raged, you have raged against the dying of the light. I know you don't want to hear this, but your words have saved people. Now, not saved like doctors, firefighters, or police, but you saved them by letting them know they were not alone. People would watch a channel, and something would feel off. They would try to go to the comment section asking others if they felt the same. And all they got was backlash from those who were blinded by the darkness. You held the match that let others see that they were not alone. You made a community that let people know they weren't the problem. The YouTubers really were the problem. They felt success, and they wanted more. They sold their souls so they wouldn't have to work. 
Your match may have never started a bonfire, but it lit the way for others out of the darkness and into the light. A light of hope. A light that may have made a brighter tomorrow 5,000 people. That's 5,000 people who may have given away their hard-earned money to those online. That may have still been blindly following those people. And the subscriber count are only the hard numbers you can see. The views. Imagine the number of people who only watched you, didn't subscribe, but your words stayed with them. It may have not been a brush fire, but in the darkness, people will huddle around the light. You had 5,000 people. You will not be forgotten, and you will not be lost to the dark sea of time. Thank you for your services. Goodbye and good luck. I loved how he started this with Do Not Go Gentle Into That Good Night. That's an amazing poem, all right? And that has inspired me to come up with an idea for something I'm going to try out on the second channel, okay? So I got some inspiration from this. People tell me that my channel has inspired them. So sometimes I can get inspiration from a lot of comments like this happened, Rose. You bring up the concept of people selling their souls. There's a lot of people on this platform that have sold their souls. And people will come by here and they'll ask me questions on a channel. They'll ask me things like, do you think this person is lost? They're going down a dark path. And that's open to, it's open to conversation, all right? What you might consider someone selling their soul might not be what I might consider it or someone else might consider it. But I'm going to focus on one thing you said here in the middle, which is what is the problem? Sometimes you might go to a channel and you might feel a certain way about an upload. You might see multiple Patreon plugs. You might hear them say something like they're missing a game and you might want to bring it up in a comment section. You might want to have them 10 rows, but you realize the minute you bring that up, a lot of people attack you in the comment section for bringing up something that is very truthful. Well, here's a section on YouTube where people realize they can come to and they can openly discuss a YouTuber when they bring up a game that they don't have. When they bring up they're starting a Patreon or maybe they got a new tier they're bringing out. People can come here, openly discuss that kind of thing without a fear, without a fear of going to their own channel and a backlash from just bringing something up. The concept, the idea that a person might be selling their soul. One time a YouTuber got on YouTube as a passion, as a passion because they wanted to share their craft with the world. But then that got twisted, twisted when they got a little bigger, and then a little bigger, and then a little bigger, and they got twisted, and no longer was it about sharing their passion with the world. It was about getting money from their audience, which some people might say, you know, nothing wrong with Patreon, nothing wrong with that at all. But I think there's something wrong with the not wanting an open discussion around something like Patreon in regards to YouTube. Okay. I'm here because I feel and I believe that people should be able to have an open discussion around these things. Maybe I don't have all the answers, Adam Ten Rose. Maybe I don't. At the end of the day, I have one opinion, one view on whatever it is, on all my arguments. Regardless of whether I'm talking about YouTube or YouTubers or DC movies. I have my views, I have my opinions, and people can disagree with me openly here. But you don't get this on a lot of other channels. You don't. And try to go to a channel and just bring up a comment questioning the Patreon, their Patreon, questioning the Patreon tiers. Chances are you might get shadow banned for even questioning that. So there's a fear of people that actually have Patreons now, openly discussing this. And there's a fear of an audience that is 
smelling a lot of the bullshit now. Maybe you couldn't smell it before. Maybe you got a slight whiff of it. But through channels like this, through what I did in 2019 and others did in 2019 in trying to expose a lot of this shit, and other channels did that before I did. I'm, I wasn't the first, and I won't be the last. Hampton Rose, I don't think there's anything wrong with questioning YouTubers, questioning their motivations, questioning anything about them, being critical about them. I think it's only a problem when you have people trying to silence the critics, silence fair criticism. And with what's happening right now on the platform, it's a really sad fucking time for the platform. It is. The silencing of people. People trying to extinguish that light, that spark. There's a lot of people out there, Haddon Rose, that do not like channels like this existing. And it's very obvious why they don't like that. Because they don't want people to think for themselves. They don't want people to think, well, you know what? It's kind of fucking stupid to give anyone on YouTube my hard-earned money when I could go out and buy a video game, when I could go out and watch a movie, when I could go out and buy anything for myself. It's fucking stupid to give money to somebody just for uploading hobby YouTube videos. That's one thing that's never going to change about this channel, how I feel, and what I preach. It's just fucking stupid. Okay? Radical. 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 Radical.